All right, guys, sorry. Um, welcome back. I don't know if you guys are watching this on, on Thursday or Friday. Not quite sure when or how you guys are watching this, but I do want to make sure that we have this uh, kind of queued up, ready to go for either Thursday or Friday so that we can have an understanding of what may happen if we put too many price controls on our goods. All right, remember our goal here is to kind of maybe try to figure out a way to solve this oil crisis and that we have our Secretary of uh, Energy telling us really that we need to set a price floor or ceiling on this. Um, so kind of a review of what we've been doing, kind of what some things that we've been working on, and I want to make sure that you guys have this down as we start to kind of get going because I do think that it's rather important that we understand kind of how this plays into it. So again, we're going to take some notes. These notes are your non-traditional notes for me. They are the simple fill-in-the-blank notes. That I dislike strongly, but I do want to make sure that you guys realize once I'm back, we won't do this very much anymore. All right. Anyways, here we go. Black market. Ready? We'll talk about the black market and what the black market is. And hopefully you guys have had a chance to kind of think about it and answer uh, what the black market is and, and what do you guys think it does or, or what's in it. And think about that in a way that, that we are critically thinking about what it means when we say the word black market. All right. So first and foremost, to kind of review... What we're really working on here is we're really working on the idea that um, we're going to put a price control somewhere between the product market and our household. Right? That price control doesn't apply to the firm and the product market. It just applies to our household. And that's where this runs into issues. That's why we have surpluses and shortages. All right? So we'll take a look at this type of thing. We see price controls being put in place to, to determine... Um, what the new equilibrium price should be. So we have price controls that tell us what the demand is going to be and what the supply is going to be. And it's a way of controlling how those things happen. All right? If these can't meet, we're going to have a, a shortage or a surplus. It doesn't matter which one, but we're going to have one. And that's going to cause massive issues in our society. So it's important that we take a look and understand kind of how this happens and what it means. Anytime that we see a supply or demand for a particular good is not met, we're going to have a surplus or a shortage. You guys know this, right? We have surplus, we have extra. If we have a shortage, we don't have enough. That's kind of common sense to you guys at this point, right? Price floors kind of tell us how low a price can go. So with this example here, that yellow price floor is above the equilibrium price, which would shift the quantity demanded to less and the quantity supplied to more. And what would happen there is we would have a surplus, all right? If we have a price ceiling that is below the equilibrium, right? A ceiling being the maximum price that we can charge for a good or service, what's going to happen there is we're going to have a new supply that's going to be a lot lower than the demand. It's really shaped by our laws of supply and demand. So what we see with this is we see this way that we can have something happening in our, in, our, in our market, but really not within the control of the producers. And that's why we don't have a true market economy. But what we see with this is we see this kind of taking place and shifting the way things can go. And what that means and what that happens is, is, is I want you guys to answer these questions and tell me if, we have an, if what happens to equilibrium with a price floor um, where the price is set above, excuse me, where the price is set um, above the equilibrium price. And then well, the next one is, what happens if we have a price ceiling that is below the equilibrium price? Take a moment and answer these two questions for me. All right, so hopefully you guys had a chance to answer those as we move on. So a black market occurs when we go outside of the price control of the market, right? It becomes an underground economy, all right? If we were doing something where we were selling a good or service, for more than the price controlled price, we would be breaking the law because we're going outside of the normal economy, but also because we are going against the price controls that are in place. Now, one way to look at this would be gasoline, right? Our example is gasoline. If we set a price ceiling, what's going to happen? People are going to turn around and sell at a higher price. I can ride my bike to work. I live four minutes from my work, but the government says I get X amount of gas per week. Here's a way for me to pay for part of my rent by selling the gas to other people that need it more because they drive more or drive cars that aren't as fuel efficient. So what we see with that is we kind of usually see that. Black markets usually deal in legal goods, actually. They're not usually dealt in things that are illegal. It's just they go outside of the government controls or the equilibrium price or, or what would normally be in place, right? So maybe you have a surplus, maybe you have a shortage, right? A surplus gets rid of things. A shortage may kind of give you some extra options on where to get things, right? We can talk about like Christmas 96 or whenever. 
when the Furby was the hottest thing on the market and you saw lots of things. They actually made a movie um, called Jingle All the Way starting, starring the former governor of California, Arnold Schwarzenegger, who basically went through and when he did this, he basically was trying to fight somebody for the last action figure um, that was available at the store, the hottest gift that year in Christmas. And what you could do is, is I could purchase up three or four of those and then basically sell them at a higher price to people and make my money back. Same thing happens a lot with concert tickets for really popular shows. Black markets, there's not one single underground one. There are many, many individual underground markets that make it up. They deal in both legal and illegal goods. There's no restriction on what they deal. Um, one that was recently shut down was an internet black market called the Silk Road, and that was shut down within the last two, two and a half years. Um, what we saw with that is we saw places that it was a place where you could go and hire somebody to kill somebody for you or find a way to uh, make safer drug transactions. All, right? All of those things are illegal and it was shut down by the federal government, right? So black market prices can exceed or be below the prices that are charged in the normal market. So if I have a price ceiling on gasoline at $4 a gallon, but I have a tremendous amount of gasoline because I have a Prius and we don't burn much gas when we drive, what I could do is I could take my extra gas for that week, put it in cans, and sell it to the highest bidder to kind of get that, right? Or let's say that there's a minimum price that I need to pay for labor and I want to hire you know some people that are willing to make a quick buck but not willing to necessarily um, make minimum wage because they just need the money I could hire those people at below minimum wage which would be below the floor um, below the market and I have a black market for labor All right so black markets how do they work well the black market kind of comes up with the difference in by an, in, in a shortage by supplying the good um, for different things. So if we have a price ceiling, right, we have our quantity demanded um, available to us and, and we see a new market, a new supply called the black market supply labeled BM here, going through a legal manners to basically make a profit on this, right? So whatever it could be, it doesn't matter what it is, but they're going outside of the regulations on the market, which is causing them an unfair advantage, which is causing them to make money, which is causing it to be illegal kind of weird logic there but that's really what happens with black markets All right black markets can also find ways um, not only to solve shortages but also surpluses right um, what we can do is is we can dispose of things illegally so maybe we need to have certain things on hand and we have too many because we ordered too many all of a sudden they disappear can they go someplace else and somebody else may store them or keep them for you without you knowing very much about it. And that's kind of one of the fun things about these markets is that that's how they really work. All right, black markets fill things um, for things that are illegal as well. Um, in this case, the equilibrium price is the price of what's being charged in that area for that good or service. And that's really what we have to come down to. Black markets arise for really four main reasons. The first is they need to supply people with a good that they want. The second would be to avoid our taxation. The third would be to increase our profits. And the fourth would be bypass any restrictions in that market. And that's really what black markets aim to do. They aim to please and they aim to please using these items. All right. Last but not least, I want you guys to answer the question here. Um, what it is is that they play a key role in our economy. They give us things that we may not otherwise be able to get. So it's important that, that, that we do this, but it's also important that the government have some control over it. All right? And we need to figure out a way to balance that. So when we think about this and we think about what we're looking at with these price controls potentially on gasoline, what we have to do is we have to consider exactly what it is that, that we're doing here. If we're doing something that is going to assist us in controlling the price, but at the same time lead to a massive black market, do we really want to do that? And that's the question that you have to ask. I believe the question I wrote for you guys is who makes the most money in a black market? Anyways, I hope that was helpful today and I look forward to seeing you guys on Monday. What you guys are going to do up next is you guys are going to take a look at some of the text from groups and, and people that think that their groups are more important than other groups and should have access to oil. Um, and we'll go through that. And when we go through that, you guys will answer some questions on those sheets. And I'll have a short video for that in just a moment. All right. Take care, guys. Have a wonderful day.